Hello everyone. So today I wanted to continue the video series on the custom built amp that I'm doing for Scott. And I wanted to go over the tone stack. The tone stack is one of the most critical parts of an amplifier that sets the voicing of it. It gives you the color palette to be able to paint with. Uh, one of the things that I look for in a uh, good tone stack is one that kind of sets the voicing to where you're not having frequencies that are on the bass player's kind of side one that kind of dips out the mids right around where a singer would be and highs that are not really piercy, nice picky, and sound awful. Um, so there's different types of tone controls, let's say, in guitar amplifiers. One of the most simplest one is one that all guitar players are familiar with actually. And it is the tone knob that is on your guitar. It's just a simple potentiometer with a capacitor, and it just rolls the highs off. And there are a lot of guitar amplifiers that use that. Uh, you know, Silvertones used it, and uh, several of the other, say, more inexpensive amplifiers use that as well. Then you can get the more complex ones uh, that have like a treble and bass control, treble middle bass, um, and then you can uh, get into also active tone controls. Uh, so most of the ones that guitar amplifiers have are passive tone controls, which means they cannot add frequencies, they can only subtract frequencies. Uh, now a good example of a active tone control is one that is right behind me on this Mesa Boogie where you've got the active EQ. Uh, so let's go to the computer and look at tone controls and see how they work and see how we can modify one to make it act in the way we want it to act. All right, so I have here a online tone stack calculator just to kind of help visualize what's going on. Uh, so this is for a Fender treble middle bass tone stack. Uh, so this is very similar to one that's in the AV763 circuit. Uh, so it may not look 100% familiar if you've looked at a uh, schematic before, but here's your treble control, bass control, and then this is a deluxe reverb, so it has a fixed uh, mid resistor here. You have different cap capacitors here, treble, bass, mid, and the slope resistor. And we have that laid out. There's your treble cap, mid uh, bass cap, and mid cap, and then treble, middle, bass, controls, and slope resistor. Now the slope resistor, um, a lot of people don't know what it does, but it basically sets the amount of volume that is going between the treble control and the mid and bass control. So the higher this is in value, the more higher frequencies you will have because that's allowing more to go to the treble control versus the mid and bass control. Uh, so now let's look at the graph of the Fender tone stack. And so one thing to kind of keep in note here, so this is your frequencies down here, the low E string on a electric guitar tuned E standard is 82 Hertz. So that's right here. So one thing you'll notice is that this is boosting frequencies well below that. And if we go over here and use this, you see it's acting on a lot of frequencies that are too low for a guitar. Now, if we set the mid control to about 6.8, which is where it is in the deluxe reverb, you can see how much of a mid dip there is, and this is right at 49 hertz, where most vocal ranges is going to be up a little bit closer to uh, 1 kilohertz. And then the highs here, so one thing we can do is just take a sweep, and you can see all of the different uh, possible combinations here of that tone stack. So let me show you the Marshall one here, and how this is kind of boosting the frequencies here right where we need it to be to ensure we have tighter bass. That way we're not in the range that a bass guitar would be in, but we're right in the range where, uh, you know, the electric guitar low E string is. This mid is bumped up to about 700 hertz. So that's a little bit more where it's cutting, where you're not getting in the way of the vocalist. And this is still about saying that one thing you may notice is that all of this is a lot higher in the graph than this is. 
One of the reasons for that is the value of these potentiometers here. Now on the Fender, the treble and bass is 250K and the mid control is you know, 10K in like a twin or a super or 6.8K fixed in like a deluxe reverb. Now on a Marshall, the treble control is 220, bass is one meg and then a 25K for the mid control. So you add all these up, that's a lot higher resistance than the Fender. So that kind of helps force more signal out of the tone stack uh, to where you're not losing it all the ground down here. So that's one of the differences between the Marshall and the Fender. So this isn't quite 100% where I want it to be. I want this to kind of sit a little more between, oh, the super bass and the super lead. This has got the super lead values in here. So, so if we change the treble capacitor to something in between, say about 330, and apply that, so that moves this up a little bit more to about 840. We've got that. So I want to have a little bit more of the highs here. So I'm going to up this to 47K. So that brought this down a little bit more high. So it's a little bit more even here. We just have the tone control set at 50% here. Uh, one other thing I want to do is adjust the base potentiometer, the base control. One meg, one problem with a lot of marshals, you kind of have this light switch effect that where, you know, down here there's nothing, then all of a sudden it just jumps up to that. So if I take this down to 500K and apply that, so that lowers that down a little bit. And one thing else I want to do is something that Eddie Van Halen's Marshall actually has. Instead of a 25K mid, it's 50K. So that allows it to be a little bit more of a flatter response. So if we do a sweep on this, this mid bump, yeah, it's a little low in some areas. Um, but it's not extended completely out like the Fender was to where we're rolling off these frequencies that the bass player is in these frequencies are a little bit closer to more where the vocal range would be and nice high end and we have a lot of signal that's coming out of here versus the fender one so these values of a 330 picofarad uh treble capacitor 220 220 nanofarads for the bass and mid 47 for the slope resistor and then these values for the potentiometers is what I'm going to go with for Scott's amp. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe. I'll see you guys for the next one.